Yeah, this is an update on the Trans Am. I'm just sitting up here in my office thinking I got there's a few things that I haven't resolved yet. The the temperature gauge still doesn't work. The heater blower isn't working for some reason. And uh, I got to align it. The alignment. I think those are the three things that I got left to do. So I'm just going to talk about this a little bit. Again, if you watch my videos, all the information is in there somewhere from the beginning to the end. I mean, I cover almost everything. I didn't, this, this, these aren't really to, these videos aren't really to show you how to do things. They're how I did them as they came up. So I might start something one day and then I don't have a part and then I switch to something else the same day and then something else. But somewhere, everything is in these videos. It, it can even be frustrating for me to go back sometimes and watch them and try to figure out what the, what the heck are you talking about? But anyway, getting to the temperature gauge, and again, I haven't been going down there because it's too cold. I just don't want to hang out. I'm getting older. I got a heater, but I just, my feet get cold now. They never used to get cold when the, when the slab is like 20. But anyway, the temperature gauge. One of the problems I'm finding with working on cars, you know, not just this car, but any car, is let's say the, uh, the temperature sending unit, which is in the block. How do you test that? I mean, I know, I'm know. i I'm saying I know how to test it, but how do I know what the values are? How do I know if, if it appears to be good, but it's not really good? So for the, the temperature gauge, it, it can only be three things. Either the sending unit isn't working right, the, uh, the instrument gauge isn't working right, or the wire to the gauge is not, is faulty. So I'm up here thinking about it and I guess from what I've been learning, again, I, I knew all this once, I made videos on it, I checked it, but uh, I forgot everything. But this is what I'm remembering now is that the sending unit is basically a, a it's just a resistor so as it heats up as the engine heats up the resistance goes lower so in other words uh, if you unplug the temperature it, again my, this is the way my brain works it doesn't always work organized but uh so let's say that you, look, you go out to your car you turn the ignition on if you ground the sensing unit it and 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 look at your gauge it should go all the way to hot so what you're doing is you're just giving it less resistance you just got rid of all the resistance so that's the first test if if you ground the resistor meaning you run a again i think i know what i'm talking about here if i just take the wire that goes to the sending unit and just put it onto the ground of the body the gauge should go all the way to hot if it doesn't work if if that doesn't work that's the first test then it, it then the chances are it's your wire or your instrument on the on the dash your your gauge if that makes sense but then if you're looking at the sending unit and you're wondering again again everything is so complicated I mean when you're when you got so many things going on in your life but if you now if you want to check your sending unit I mean there's a lot of ways to do it but again it's just working on resistance if you let's say put it in hot water or cold water you sh and you measure the resistance you should get a different different temperature yeah, I mean a different uh, reading on your uh, on your uh, voltmeter or your uh, resistance meter on your voltmeter 
but cold maybe I have this backwards but you could check it very easily so if you took it out put power to it grounded it you know let's say it was sitting out of the car cold it should be more resistance and as you heat it up with a torch or boiling water or something it should go up to a higher temperature I think I said that correctly so I tried to like I said I tried to look up the values for this and uh, let me just look at my phone what I mean by values is if you can see this well, I'm just going to read it this is from Summit Racing so the, the uh, sending unit is a TS6 it reads okay it fits different GM temperature gauge applications from 53 to 80 it has a half inch thread and a nail head type connector whatever that means so I think that's what it clips onto like a nail head but according to this, if I said it right, it's 268 ohm ohms at 100 Fahrenheit. So more ohm. I mean, yeah, more ohms. So the colder it is, the more resistance. But at 80 ohms, it's 220. So I did say it right. The ohm should drop as it heats up. So I could just take the take it back out. I mean that's to me that's the, the easiest thing to start with is ground it. Turn the key on, ground it, you know, tape it to a ground or whatever. Go in the car, see if the gauge moved all the way to hot. Right then that'll tell me something's wrong. The sending unit, the wire, or the gauge. So now you got to narrow it down. I know I'm going over this over and over. But again, you could take the sending unit out, put it on a desk. The resistance is going to be whatever it is. Again, you have to hook up some kind of voltage to it and a ground because you have to make a loop. And then heat it. If it if the temperature moves like I, like it was saying if it gets up to if you if you can get like a laser pointer and it gets up to 220 I'm just going to read this again the resistance should drop now the other thoughts I was going through let's say that let's say the resistor works but it's not right what do you do about that well I'm not an electronics expert but I guess you could put some, you know, uh, some uh, resistor in there to adjust it. In other words, if it's working but it doesn't seem right to you, I'm thinking this over in my mind. Start your car, warm it up, check what the engine heat is, right, right where, the, where the resistor, where, right where the, uh, the sending unit is. So let's say it's whatever. 180 200 get the reading and that reading that you're getting in ohms is what the temperature is in other words if it says 300 at 200 that's what that is the reading if that makes sense versus cold whatever cold is it should be at zero or 100 it should be at a certain point you could adjust this if you're sending in isn't right with resistors I haven't done it I don't really even want to do it now I'm just gonna talk about this a little bit more just kind of as it enters my head let's say you're at you're in the engine compartment and you get a certain resistance at the engine compartment when you ground it 
So now you're, you're wondering, is the wire in the engine compartment going to give me the same reading back at the instrument panel? So the only way to figure that out is to take the, pull the instrument panel loose and uh, see if you have the same reading that you had at the engine compartment at your gauge. I mean, there's going to be a little resistance because of the wire, but it, uh, it could be the wire. It could be the wire is not connected tight. So then you rolled out the, you figured out the sending unit's working, the wire is good or bad, or the sending unit's good or bad. Now you've narrowed it down to your gauge. Now I guess with your gauge, you could do the same thing. You could take the gauge off. I think I did this in an earlier video, but way back. You could take the gauge out, put it on a desk, and just give it different resistant values somehow. It's not working out voltage, really. It's working off resistance to a voltage. If that makes sense. So that's one of the things I got to do. I'm going over this in my head. As for the, uh, and I guess it's kind of dark in here. As for the um, fan, oh, and then we have the fuse. If there's a, there must be a fuse in line here somewhere with, with, with both these things. But then the blower, it used to work. So the blower is, the blower is in the instrument, is in the engine compartment on the passenger side behind the fender. You can't even reach it unless you pull the fender off. So how do I solve this? I think what I do is uh, find the wire that's going to the blower, probe it, and see if it has 12 volts going to the blower. If it has 12 volts going to the blower, well, that'll tell me something. Either it does or it doesn't. If it does, then probably the blower is bad. Or the switch that turns on the blower. No, if you turn the switch on, if you turn the switch on, you should have 12 volts going to the blower because the wire is inside the engine compartment. Again, I'll do this. I'll, do, I'll follow this up. I'm just, right now, I'm just trying to think of a plan. So that, anyway, this is how I do my videos. I don't, they're not really organized and, uh, I'm not a car guy really, you know, I just did this as a hobby to see if I could do it. And then as for, so that's the, uh, temperature gauge and the blower. And then I come to the, I have to align it. So I think I can do that. There's a bunch of videos on how to align it yourself. You just basically you just need a level. And again, I don't have these terms down yet because I've never aligned a car myself. I guess there's camera and tow. But it should be able to be done by myself. At least get it in the ballpark. The problem is when I'm going down the road. This is this is what I'm feeling. As I'm driving down the road, let me show you my hand. If I turn the wheel just that much the car wants to go way over both ways so i'm pretty sure that the 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 toe or the camber is out i don't know anything about it like everything i have to learn as i go now the other option maybe is that when i put the adapter plates on the back to make the uh, i think the last couple of videos which were probably months ago now maybe when i put the uh adapter plates on to make the disc brakes work which did not come in 79 it threw it out of alignment but i don't think so i think i just need to adjust the front so that's where i'm at uh oh i got shop lights i had an electrician put in brighter lights for me it was pretty it was reasonably it was, it was i have like 20 lights even though that damn shop is dark all the time I can't I couldn't see but I had them do switch it out for LEDs I didn't really watch but I guess it gets rid of the ballast inside the light 
but now I got like it's it's really bright in there hopefully I can see better as you get older your your vision gets darker it's really weird so that's the update uh, appreciate it anybody who's been watching my videos again I don't do this to make money I don't I don't I don't care how many people watch I just want to help people uh, no, I guess I just want to share what I learned, how to do it. Don't be scared to do it. And, uh, it, it unless you're rich, it, it's going to take time. Any project like this, I found out it, it, it takes time. It takes money, especially this car. It was stripped. It probably been through five hands and people just kept taking off parts, taking off parts. It was rusted. You'd have to watch all the videos, and if you do, they're really complicated because I just, like I say, I just do what I run into that day, and then if I get, let's say, to, let's say I get to the sending unit, like today, I might not get back to it for a month. And then in that meantime, I, I'm working on something else. So that's how all these videos are. If, you, if you're not familiar with YouTube, I'm going to show you something. It's just another thought that came in my head. I'm looking at YouTube right now. This is like TV to me now. But, uh, if, let's say I'm, I'm just, I'm on this, I don't know how I got here. But if you go to, uh, let's see, how do I do this? Uh, no, I'm, not, I'm not just going to go to this website. If you go to this little, search bar right here let's go to my website so I'm gonna go to my channel so so I'm gonna click that I'm just gonna type in uh, um, temperature gauge I don't know how to spell. I'll push enter. So this has got all the things that I did. This not, if you're if you're watching my site, and the only thing that's on here is mostly the car. But see, I went over a bunch of things over time. Let's see, one year, one year, one year, one year. Anyway. If you're using my site or anybody's site, go to this and you can search and find it. But, the, but I know by going back and looking, that does not necessarily mean that there isn't in it. I don't talk about it more in other videos as I solve the problems. These are specific. I'm trying to figure it out. But look at right here. The water temperature is at 230. It was working then. Oh, the other thing. The other thing I was, the other thing I was thinking about. Uh, what do you want, Katie? Go on, go. Whenever I let her outside, she comes in, she cries. That's cold. She's saying, she's saying I'm a good kitty. So, uh, the other thing I thought of, the sending unit, You got to put Teflon tape on these or they might leak. So uh, it could be without doing any other test that I put Teflon tape on all the threads all the way down. So it might not be grounding itself because I have Teflon tape all the way down. If you put Teflon tape on, don't put it on the first few threads. I, m I might have did that. In other words, you got to have some place for this to ground. Once the Teflon tape is on there, it, it's not grounding. That could be the problem. Anyway, this is just an update. It's getting warmer. Uh, yesterday I went out and worked on some trees. But I've just been kind of hibernating. I've been, this is what I've really been doing. I've been trying to figure out what do I want to do next? This car's almost done. What do I want to do next? I, don't, I think I said this before, I don't even really care about driving this car. It, I'm not a, uh, 
I don't have any vanity in me, obviously. Look at me, I don't care what anybody thinks. To me, I just wanted something to do. So, I don't, how do I do something new and not spend a ton of money? I haven't figured that out yet. I, I tried computer programming, it, it bores me. You don't really do anything, you're just sitting there pushing buttons and it does something. That's for me, I'm not saying for everybody. Let's think about maybe building a uh, old blazer and putting an LT engine in, which I've never done. Figure out how to hook up the computer in a new car. I mean, in an old car or rebuild or build an engine stand. I'm thinking about that and play around with engines on engine stands. But I don't want to spend all my money. I'm trying to save money. The other thing I could do is sell the car. And then I would get back, well, I'm not even sure what it's worth. 10,000, 40,000, 50, I don't know. Oh, the, other, the last thing is that uh, I left, I think where I left off is when I had put the windows in and the trim on, I did it myself with the help of my boss to stop by. I got silicon all over the car. And I left the, and I, this is when I, before I had it, I had it painted, and this is after I had it painted. And then dust got all over it, and and, and uh, condensation was dripping. I, look, and I think what I did is I tried to wipe the uh, silicone off with, I don't know what I used, paint thinner? I, I'm not saying paint thinner, but something really stupid. It really screwed up the paint. So I took it back to the painter. It cost me 2400 bucks, but right now, and I have a tarp on it. Right now the car looks like glass. I'm even scared to touch it. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, I think I said this in my last video, is I'm going to go down and take the tarp off, put some wax on it. And I think I talked about the wax he said to use. He said be very careful. He said black is the worst color. I mean, if you want it to be like the mirror finish. I kind of screwed myself. The next car I build... I don't want a show car. I want a car that I can get dirty and uh, and do whatever I want. Yeah, I want to. I want to kind of cuss. I want to build a car where I could. I could switch the dash out. I could. I could do whatever I want. I don't ever want to make a uh, a stock car again. It's just. It's. It's. It's too hard. I suggest if you're gonna do what I did. You find, well, I don't know. You find the best part car possible, then you restore it. But if you get like a survivor car, they're gonna be, they're gonna be, they're gonna be worn out. You might not look, the paint might not, the paint might look good, and the seats might look good. But the chances are everything else is shot. So, I guess I'm just babbling on anybody that's watching. Yeah. So if you decide to build a car like me that was from junk. Plan on spending some money. And that's what I did. I just spread it out over time. I mean, I did still spend money, but if you watch my video, I tried to fix plastic pieces, uh, sheet metal, whatever I could try. If I could fix it myself, no matter how long it took, I did that. But it still cost money. And then there was the paint. The next car, I think, if I paint it, I'm going to paint it myself. I don't care how screwed up it is. But again, I don't want a car that looks really good. I want a car, I don't know what I want. So that's where I am at the end of the video. Have fun, there's my cat. Kitty, you out in the rain? You're a good kitty. Yeah, I just wanted to add this to the end of the video. So uh, I'm just thinking about my camera, what I want to say. So the, I never shot videos in my life until I started doing this car. And I'm not a great editor. It bores me mainly. But I do edit some of them. But uh, this, I can't, this camera that I have, it's a Sony, uh, I'm trying to read it. It's a Sony HD, it's an old one. I can't put a remote mic on my uh shirt or something 
I did buy a GoPro, but I kept reading articles about how they overheated it. And when I bought it, the sucker heated up like a freaking oven. I just sent it back. But I don't have a remote mic. That's why you can't hear me a lot of times. And I mumble. I don't know why I mumble. I think I have to talk really loud to be clear. And I don't... I find out that scared... As my life, I find out I'm a big guy. People get scared when I talk clear because I talk so loud. So I started mumbling. So I don't be so threatening. <clears throat> but anyway, off topic again. Uh, it's a Sony camera. The I it, it, They are what they are. That's all I can say. I'd like to get another camera. Oh, when I bought this camera, I think I said this about five times. I looked on a, a let go or something and I met somebody in a parking lot and they sold this camera to me for a hundred bucks. Again, I just decided way back in the beginning that I was going to shoot videos. I'm glad I did. And they're really pretty much garbage, I think. I mean, when I watch other people's channels, they're so perfect. Uh, so that's it. Just my videos are what they are. But if you're looking to rebuild the Trans Am, or a, or a firework or all the information on everything I did is in here somewhere just good luck finding it search is where you start and I would say like I did the example of the uh, instrument panel the chances are the information is going to be in the videos in that air in that time frame but here it is a year later as an example and I'm getting back to it again so how do I how does a, how do we, uh, a person like me, how do you mark this? I mean, how do you, how do you title this? Going back over instrument panel again, going back over temperature gauge again. So that's what's going on. Do the best I can. Hope you guys enjoy it. And, uh, I, I highly suggest in a, your life, find something to do that you've never done before. And it's, and it's going to be daunting, if that's the right word. You might be scared, or you might be thinking, I can't do this. But you know what? If, if a dumbass like me can do it, anybody can do it. You just start doing it, one thing at a time. Yeah, I just wanted to add on one more thing. I just watched the videos that I just made. There's one more thing that i got to do. The, the driver's side power uh, uh, window isn't working. I think it's the motor. It, again, it's, this is, build has been over like six years. I can't remember. I think it worked once, but it doesn't. It hasn't worked since I got it back from the paint shop. So I did order uh, a motor. Well, it works, but it doesn't work right. It just like moves an inch or I can pull it up, but it's just, it's either binding, the motor's bad. But the power must be working because it, it is moving a little bit. So that's one more thing. So I got the power motor, the, uh, the heat, the temperature gauge, the blower, the fan blower. Oh yeah, another thing that, and the alignment. And the other weird thing that happened was when I turned on the windshield wipers, they didn't go on right away. In other words, they didn't work for five minutes and all of a sudden they started working. So the reason I'm telling you all this stuff is that this is how I built this car. You just you got to think about this stuff and try to some, come up with some kind of logical answer that works for your head. So if the windshield wipers went on, that means the power is working, but it's not working all the time, or the motor's not working all the time. Now I think I had a video when I, way back where I showed how to test a, a motor, a, a power, a, uh, windshield wiper motor 
or it could be the contacts on the on the switch. But anyway, that's how I do it. Oh, the other, I guess I'm gonna add this. If you're building a car, and you can't find answers. Uh, some people ask me questions. This is the way I do it. Is let's say you're missing a part in your car. You got a car, and somebody stripped all the parts out, and you, and you can't find out what the heck goes in that spot. Go to eBay where the cars are for sale and try to find a picture of what what is supposed to be in the car. I mean, that's how I did it. And then, once you figure out that part has to be in the car, then you have to find that part. And I again, I use eBay to find parts. And uh, the um, manuals, or the parts manuals, aren't really any help because people don't use the part the old part numbers anymore and uh, so that's what I do yeah watch YouTube eBay for parts eBay for pictures of people selling cars that show parts that are missing and then things that run you run into that are weird uh, like the like the temperature gauge I, I this morning I decided to start thinking about the car again watch a few videos try to get some ideas and uh, let's face it we're all stupid if you think you're not stupid you're probably gonna fail in life just assume that you don't know anything and uh, the only way to get knowledge is to suffer through it I just use the word suffer but work your way through it and you can do it you can do it Like I got another problem just because I'm yakking away. That light right there is a three-way light. But for some reason, you know, you see, click the switch once, low, again, higher, and higher means brighter. But for some reason, it's not working. I tried a new bulb, it's not working. So I'm assuming, again, like a car, it's got power, the light goes on. So it must be the, sw it must be the switch. The, 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 not the switch. Well, it could be the switch down below, or the, I'm looking at the light, or it could be the, uh, or the support where it plugs into the socket. Again, I looked on YouTube. There's a video on it. I could probably just test this light by, I guess, starting on low, put a voltmeter in the top and see if it changes as I switch it. I guess it would get more power and more power. That's how I solve everything. You just, you, you watch videos, you watch, and you just, think about it for a while. Sometimes I think about this stuff for months. Sometimes an idea, you know, there's things around this house. It took me, take me five years to come up with an answer. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, that's how you do it. You know, things that aren't critical, things that just are like in the back of your mind. Anybody can do this stuff, anybody.